We got two random watch collectors. They absolutely crashed their party over there. One okay. of them's wearing a VTNR, bro. And he, the other one has a full gold Ulysses Nardan. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Think it's about Dubai. It's an unplanned watch scene. Yeah. Like, even the people next to us, man. Yeah. Like, me and this guy are literally wearing the same exact watch. this beautiful hotel let me show you guys around a little bit uh, so what is your first impression about this place it is actually bombastic it is over the top in like every kind of way so you have this architecture which looks like there are blocks on top of blocks with like holes in between so it's yeah as freaky as it gets so I've got the VTNR on that's you know? cool I've seen it as soon as I arrived but you have the bezel twisted a little bit or do, or do you tracking a third time zone or something I'm, I'm tracking a fourth time zone oh I'm tracking Africa <laughs> Uh, as you might know, the wrist guy. I come from Austria and Germany, so I have a YouTube channel, a German speaking YouTube channel, and then more international Instagram account. That's what's up, you know? <laughs> we always hang out with big boys. This is my second time around buying this, by the way. Oh! Yeah, right. so the first time I couldn't get it from my ID, I put my wait, yeah. my name on the wait list for like the longest time. It never came through. And for some weird, odd reason, yes, I was also under the impression, I'm still under the impression yeah. that it might get discontinued. So I did what yeah. any normal watch addict would do yeah i went and topped up the premium i picked it from the aftermarket <laughs> on an oyster bracelet and yeah. little did i know i was contacted for this like not too long ago maybe yeah. two months ago and then you just can't say no yeah and okay. then i look at yeah. how much i paid ad wise yeah. versus aftermarket i'm like yeah it was a bit impulsive to buy from the aftermarket yeah. you know is the longevity attributed to rolex calling it out now because i would be cool or they might just carry it out to the rest of the gmt line what do you think Considering you're wearing a GMT as well. Yeah, me too, yeah. I have the root beer on, but the full gold. That's a watch I don't see anywhere, to be honest. To me, this is a, a very occasional watch, like like you. So I'm flying out to Dubai. Yeah. It's the watch to put on, man. Yeah. Yeah. I well, think. Is, is this your travel watch? This is a one and only? Or? Not if I go to, like, let's say Geneva or something, or yeah. Paris, I don't wear this. Yeah. But to Dubai, come on. It's, okay. it's like the perfect Dubai watch for me since it has the GMT function. Yeah. I think that's the perfect watch that I could have worn. It really is. Since it's also water resistant, so I go swimming with it. It's so cool with the black and the, yeah. and the brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually I like the oyster bracelet. Yeah. I also like the new one in yellow gold. I just pulled my <laughs> name off that yeah? full gold GMT. Why though? It was basically moving this order to something else and ended up asking for a Daytona set. In steel? Uh, in platinum. Oh, that's so, really good. So it was a situation in either or. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, just get rid of that, GMT. <laughs> okay, that's true. That's but uh, do you get it with like the diamond indices? You say yes. No. Why though? No. The first gen of everything is always yeah. awesome. Yeah. The misconception right now is people tell you, oh, the new Daytona, the new LN12 reference is out. So that's going to call out the old one. People are not going to pay attention to the old one. And on the contrary, I think people will always yeah. appreciate and the old one will be a little bit more sought after because it is the first transitional ceramic Daytona, yes, right? Yes, it is, yes. So that's that's Gen 1. Yes. And the same with those open case back ones, yeah. right? I mean, it's something so subtle, so easy, so minimal. A lot of brands have done it. Yeah. But when Rolex does it, you know? That's so weird. I know, in the first iteration, yeah. you're like, okay. So it doesn't really matter how many platinum open case back they release after that. Yes. I still think this will be the first or the last. Exactly. So it's always first or last. Also in the car world and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's always first or last. You, you're into cars a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Not not like as in watches. Porsche. Nine one one. No, for me number one would probably be something like. I really like BMW though. BMW. Yeah, BMW. Is really. One, yeah, it is like. I don't know. Which which BMW, like the M, M performance we're talking, right? Or Yes. Or non M. I like like the M5 competition stuff. Yeah. I also like the old stuff from the 90s. I think they're yeah. iconic. Yeah. So an M5 from the 90s, M3 from the 90s, the yeah. 8, the yeah. old one. So something like that would really... Okay. Be... You start off in the beginning, of course, you want all the Rolexes. Yes. You know, and then you get to a point where you mature a little bit and you're like, okay, what else is out there? Yes. You start consolidating and leaving the ones that really resonate with you. Yeah. So favorite brand? Favorite brand, Rolex and Patek. Okay. Uh, favorite model line within Rolex and Patek? Rolex, I would say, uh, let's go with the GMT Master. Okay. Precious metal. Precious metal. Okay. <laughs> solid. I get that. I have my grail watch as a Patek right now. Aquanaut. No, it's not. I got an Aquanaut. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. But it's Retail? Not... 
Yeah. <laughs> I did. You should do a victory lap right now. <laughs> I need to go through him for my watches, honestly. I did, and I also got, got the new folding clasp, which is like, yeah. okay. I need to... It's ridiculous, but yeah. I've, I've been on a wait list for like the past six years. They're not even calling me. I've done the spend and all of it. I'm letting you, you know how to do it. Okay, all right. So, I look forward to and that. For me, like right now, as is, favorite everyday yeah. brand is Rolex. I'm yeah. trying to dabble with Tudor and try to understand that Tudor is yeah. more toolish and vintage inspired. Like the yeah. 54 is something I absolutely love. It is the only tutor out of all of the yeah. waste of money tutors I, I acquired <laughs> over the years and sold for a loss that I would appreciate, right? But then favorite brand, everyday Rolex with no shadow of a doubt. I would do steel. I wouldn't do precious metals when it comes to Rolex, although I do have a John Mayer Daytona that I absolutely love. But yeah. to me, that's like a grail piece to look at. LN, 6500 yes, LN, okay. Exactly. okay. But such a hard question, man. Yeah. And occasionally maybe yeah. touch and pad in the back. Yeah. Second watch brand that would be Langanzone okay. and for me it would be a Langa 1. I've actually picked a Langa 1 over a an Odysseus in white gold. Okay. So I, was, so I was offered thing. both. Yeah. Both were yeah. on the table. Yeah. I could have taken that yeah. and, you know and Odysseus yeah. obviously is much more sought after but yeah look Langa man they're mesmerizing when you look at them at the back. Yeah. Uh, when you try them on the wrist the way they perfected the 38.8 or 0.5 uh, yeah. uh, case size yeah. the thickness it's so timeless, right? I'm double wristing today. Of course, I've got the 6119 Patek Philippe Calatrava. And guess who just joined this family? It is the Lango one in rose gold without the moon phase. You might not, you know, like an asymmetrical dial, but for me, I, I, yeah, I dig yeah. it the same way it is. You know, you yeah. get the double ferrule, on, you know, uh, yeah. double barrels on the side and up and off. What is it? Up uh, and down, up, AB. Uh, auf und ab. Auf und ab, auf und ab, yeah. And double feather house. Yeah, double yeah. feather house, yeah. 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 yeah, which means double barrels, basically. Yeah. The yeah. big window button, yeah. like it's soothing. Yeah. You just press it. I found myself just cycling through the dates for no reason. You know what they told me at, at Lange? They they put the mechanism of the dates. Yeah. Um, you, you do not change it by pressing the button, you change it by releasing it. That's correct, yeah. So That's when you hear the click. Button. Yeah. yeah, so you cannot like overpress it yeah. or something. So That's it's true. Like, like, a, like a safety function or something. Yeah. No, I just think it's a timeless yeah. looking classic watch, yeah. uh, especially if you go the uh, precious metal route, uh, slapping it on a very colorful, funky yeah. uh, strap. I've yeah. got it on a blue strap. I'm yeah. thinking about copying a Patek red alligator strap. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, they don't make it in Langa. It's just awesome. It's just a really cool watch. And I think classics are coming back, man. Probably the perfect two watch collection. Yeah, yeah. Right but if I were to expand a little bit. Yeah. Then we're then we're gonna start looking at JLC and a few other yeah. a few others. Like uh, I've been an avid supporter of Polaris over the past couple I've of seen months. It. Yeah. Uh, the new one didn't really pick up a lot of love from the yeah. watch community because they thought that you know the grayish the chrono, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a few May dollars makes yeah. it look bigger, but you know, on the wrist, man. Like honestly, the quality between it and an Aquana, they're just comparable. It's JLC, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. You know what I mean? But it's just the name on the dial. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. And I think, I don't, I, I'm not sure about the design of JLC. I think yeah. they're, they're good in building watches, but they're maybe not so good in designing watches. I'm not sure about that, but JLC, I, really yeah. like I want to love them. Yeah. But there's always this one yeah. thing that I wish they'd done differently. Yeah. For me on the Polaris, it would have been the thickness, at least on yeah. the time only. A better taper on the rubber strap, like, yeah. you know, shush, yeah. you want that? If I were to think how JLC can go overboard. Yeah then to know that round case a little bit. Like yeah. just make it hug the wrist instead yeah. of like yeah. flat yeah. out. That would be it. You? Yeah. Iterations for JLC. JLC is probably watching this video right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the I love the reversal, but it's always either too thick yeah. or too long for me. Yeah. So I, once I had the, the tribute to 1931, but the old one, the one with the two hands, I had it and it was perfectly thin, but it was too long for me. So yeah. I So I sold it. Yeah. And then I wanted to have the dual face. Yeah. It's perfect size, but it's too thick. In a similar predicament, I end up going with the mono face. Yeah. Small second tribute, the, yeah. the one I picked, Burgundy. Yeah. Uh, on stainless steel. And the obviously leather yeah. uh, leather strap because of the thickness. Yes. Exactly. Because it just looks right, man. Yeah, you because know? it's a dress watch. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a dressier watch. Sport it? watch. Sport yeah. dress watch. <laughs> but like, it's all leather. There's no depth walk for water resistant or anything. But it's a sport watch. <laughs> It we'll is. give them that jail <laughs> team, man. You're gonna be here for how long? Uh, for a week. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need to do the Dubai video. Everyone comes to Dubai and does the Dubai yeah, video. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Let's see. I want to film something, but I also want to just enjoy the watches and enjoy the boutiques yeah. at Dubai Mall. So let's see. Let's see. Risk guy, give him a follow. I'll leave his so uh, details in the description down below. And it's been a minute, by the way. I haven't done a video. This is my first video in a month. This is the first time I take a month out.